Hello, I'm Hugh Ross, the founder of Reasons to Believe, an astrophysicist, also serve in the pastoral staff in a church that's between Caltech and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Welcome to another edition of News of the Day. At least for me personally, this is the most exciting news of the day we've recorded so far. In fact, this has got the potential to win the Nobel Prize in physics. It's taken from this paper. It's a preprint, uh, so it's not yet been published uh, in a peer-reviewed journal. It's under peer review right now. And it's written by three uh, astrophysicists, two at Stanford University and one at uh, the University of uh, Stockholm. And... Uh, Often what happens in astronomy is a, a quest uh, for uh, one, what, okay, in astronomy they pursue what are called holy grails. These are anticipated discoveries that have made, will revolutionize the discipline of astrophysics. And uh, one of those quests was to look at the stars orbiting the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy to come up with a more accurate distance from planet Earth to the center of the galaxy that would pin down what's called the distance ladder, which would lead to significant astrophysical discoveries about the origin of the universe, the cosmic creation event, and its history. But sometimes when you pursue one holy grail, it leads to the discovery of another one that was unanticipated. And one of the big holy grails of astrophysics concerns dark matter. Now, the existence of dark matter is not disputed. And maybe I need to back up. Dark matter refers to matter that's made up of constituents, particles or whatever, that do not strongly interact with photons. As distinct from ordinary matter, protons, neutrons, and electrons, that describes the matter we're all familiar with. Uh, but the dark matter is five to six times more abundant than the ordinary matter. Uh, ordinary matter makes up 4.4% of all the stuff of the universe. Uh, dark matter makes up 24.5%. We know it exists because we can see its gravitational influence on galaxies throughout the universe, uh, both the structure of galaxies, we especially see it in our own Milky Way galaxy, which is about 90% dark matter, but we also see it in the distribution of galaxies and the way galaxy clusters are organized in the universe. So astronomers don't doubt the existence of dark matter, but they've been on a quest for decades. What makes up this dark matter? And we did a news of the day where I suggested that possibly primordial black holes might make up some of it. But most astrophysicists are convinced that a good chunk, if not all, of the dark matter is made up of fundamental particles. But these fundamental particles have the property they don't strongly interact with light. So they're going to be extraordinarily difficult to detect. And for decades, both physicists and astronomers have been trying to use the Large Hadron Collider and the most advanced telescopes in the world uh, on the goal of finding these dark matter particles. While this paper uh, titled uh, Dark Branches of Immortal Stars in the Galactic Center, this may be the actual discovery. And so what they noticed is that the stars that were orbiting closely the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy they look different than other stars in our Milky Way galaxy. And so these three astrophysicists said, could it be that what distinguishes these stars is the fact that they gain some of their brightness, their luminosity, uh, from the decay of uh, these dark matter particles? When dark matter particles engage one another, they annihilate, they release energy. Maybe that explains uh, the distinct properties of these stars that orbit very close uh, to the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. So what they did initially in their paper is they developed uh, two Hertzsprung-Russell diagrams. And if you ever taken a course in a freshman astronomy, you would have been introduced to the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Uh, this first slide basically shows you it's simply a plot of luminosity uh, versus temperature and basically shows that if stars are burning by nuclear fusion, this would be the distribution, the population distribution of stars as they evolve from the time that they first form until they run out of their nuclear fusion stores in their cores. And so this team of three astrophysicists said, let's develop a distinct 
Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, a luminosity versus temperature diagram, uh, where we assume that the stars not only get their brightness from the fusion of light elements into heavy elements, like we see in our star the sun, uh, but in addition to that, they're gaining some energy uh, by uh, collecting dark matter particles and in the cores of these stars, these dark matter particles are being annihilated and releasing energy. And uh, what they note is our understanding of the dynamics of dark matter is that when you're very close to a supermassive black hole, this is where you got the greatest density of dark matter. And so this would be the most likely place to go uh, to find the effects of uh, dark matter particles. And so they developed this uh, second uh, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And what you notice here is how different this plot of uh, temperature versus luminosity for a population of stars compares with one uh, where we assume all the energy is coming from the fusion of light elements into heavy elements. The second one, we're assuming, yes, that's happening, but it's being complemented uh, by the release of energy uh, from the annihilation of dark matter particles in the core. So these would be stars that be shining both by nuclear fusion and also by the annihilation of dark matter particles. And what we know about that uh, dark matter is the closer you get to the supermassive black hole, the more of these dark matter particles uh, would exist. And so they look at the few stars. Now, the stars that we've been observing to try to determine the distance to the center of the galaxy, uh, there's only a handful that orbit closely enough that we can actually use their orbits to measure the distance of the galactic center. We now know that to better than 1% precision. So that's been a big discovery, these stars. Uh, but these three astrophysicists said, let's look at these stars and see if they match the characteristics of what we would expect if indeed a significant fraction of their brightness was coming from the annihilation of dark matter particles, which means the closer the star is to the supermassive black hole, the greater the effect would be from the annihilation of these dark matter particles. And so what they see in this Hertzsprung-Russell diagram uh, for stars that are getting their energy from two sources, not one source, is you have a lot of massive stars that are burning for a long time. And so because the absorption of these dark matter particles would continually give you light, that means that you could have massive stars that would shine brightly, not just for a few million years, but could shine brightly for billions of years. Because massive stars, if they're gaining their energy from nuclear fusion, uh, the brightness of the star uh, rises with a fourth power of the mass of the star, which is why we see in all the astronomy textbooks, the more massive the star, the faster it burns up. And stars that are more massive than, say, 20 times the mass of our star the sun, up to 60 times more massive than our star the sun, they literally go through all their nuclear fusion uh, in like 10 million years or less. Uh, but these stars that are orbiting close to the center of the galaxy, they spectroscopically measure to be old, a billion years old or older, and yet they have the brightness as if uh, they must be uh, quite young if indeed they're getting all of their energy from nuclear fusion, which is what led these three astrophysicists to conclude. We're actually discovering stars uh, that are massive, uh, very massive, and old, spectroscopically old, and yet they're bright. And this would not be possible if the stars were getting all of their brightness from the fusion of light elements into heavier elements. They must also be getting a good fraction of their brightness uh, from the annihilation of dark matter particles. Now, they end their paper by saying, we're talking about a dozen stars, and they're really to affirm that we're seeing uh, a diagram of temperature versus luminosity uh, that is distinct from that of stars that are getting all their energy from nuclear fusion. We ideally would like to have uh, 10,000 stars uh, that would be close to uh, our supermassive black hole. You know, even 30 would be good. Right now, we got about a dozen. 
Uh, this next diagram actually shows you the stars that we've discovered so far that are orbiting less than a light year uh, from the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And these three astrophysicists say, hey, if even we can get that up to 30 stars, up to 100 stars, then we'd be able to actually prove beyond any shadow of doubt we have discovered dark matter particles. Uh, we have found that holy grail of astrophysics. And frankly, I think if that discovery were to stand up, it would win the Nobel Prize in physics. And they point out, we already have telescopes. The Keck telescope and the very large telescope that's in Chile, the Keck telescope is in Hawaii. If dedicated time was given to finding more of those stars orbiting less than one light year from the center of our galaxy, it would be relatively straightforward to come up with a population of over 100 such stars. And that would be enough to prove beyond any shadow of reasonable doubt we've actually found these dark matter particles. Uh, and future telescopes, there's two telescopes uh, that are coming online that are 30 meters in diameter. That's more than 100 feet in diameter optical telescopes. And they would be capable of finding thousands of such stars orbiting close to the center of the galaxy. And, and that would be, you know, beyond any shadow of doubt. Would, uh, so I think that what's going to be happening probably in the next two years, telescope time will be dedicated on the Keck telescope and the very large telescope with a goal of getting at least 30, if not 100 such stars orbiting less than a light year. That'd be sufficient to prove beyond any shadow of doubt we've actually found these dark matter particles, then that could be followed up uh, with discoveries from the 30 meter telescope. But eh, even if all they found was 100, I think that would be enough to secure the Nobel Prize in physics that we've actually found uh, these dark matter particles. And that would be a key prediction, a fulfillment of a key prediction of Big Bang cosmology. Big Bang cosmology, and what's important here is the Big Bang, the fundamental features of the Big Bang were actually predicted in the Bible thousands of years before astronomers discovered we live in a Big Bang universe. You can go to reasons.org in 2023. I wrote an article on what the Bible says about the Big Bang. So actually proving another significant prediction of Big Bang cosmology would be a huge boost in giving additional evidence for the Christian faith demonstrating the principle we see in Psalms and Job that the more we learn about nature, the more evidence we uncover for the supernatural handiwork of God in creating and designing the universe so that we humans could live here on planet Earth and actually have the technology uh, where billions of us can hear the gospel message, respond to it, and have the promise of entering into an eternal relationship with the one that created everything.